Let's dive right in and see what are some of the problems that people have with setting goals. Now I must pre-frame and I say probably one of the biggest problems is that people actually don't set goals in the first place and that's why many people don't actually achieve the things that you know they'd like to achieve. They kind of have more just of a dream or a hope of achieving something but they're not quite sure what that might be. But even when they do set goals, very often they don't actually achieve them. New Year's resolutions is probably a prime example of that. Now there's many reasons why people don't achieve their goals and that would be different from person to person. But here's some of the most common problems that people face when setting goals. Fearing failure. And we're going to talk about this more as we go through the training. But we want to start thinking of failing forwards. Even a hurdler, if they fell over every single hurdle on the way to the finish line, they're still going to get to the finish line. So every time this hurdler falls, they're falling with their momentum forwards, and eventually they will get to the finish line. The only time we really fail is when we actually give up. And as I said, we're going to talk about this more as we go through the training. I think very often people underestimate the completion time. So how long it's going to take them to get to that outcome. You see, we live in this instant gratification society. People often expect things to happen immediately. Now, often these big life-changing goals, well, they're going to take time. They're going to take effort. They're going to take planning and hard work to actually get there. Because if it was that easy, everybody would be doing it. We vastly overestimate what we can do in the short term but we vastly underestimate what we can achieve in the long term. Another problem with goal setting is often that people set not actually their own goals but other people's goals. So these are goals that other people want for us and they're not as rewarding as when actually we set our own goals. Think of a parent that's pushing their child to become a teacher or to become a nurse or a doctor. And it's not really what the young person wants. But they go through university, maybe they get their qualification, but it's not what they want to do and they're unhappy. This leads to loss of motivation. It wasn't their goal in the first place. So I think it's important when we set goals that they've got to be meaningful to us and it's not got to be us chasing goals that other people want for us. Sometimes people set too many goals. The problem with this is that you only have a fixed amount of energy and a fixed amount of time. If you try to focus on too many different things at once, then we can't give those individual goals the attention that they really deserve. So Maybe it's better to focus our energy on fewer things that actually truly matter. Once we've achieved a goal, then we can set and plan to achieve the next one and the next one. Having too many goals going on at the same time is like trying to juggle too many balls. And in fact, it can lead to overwhelm. It can lead to people giving up and saying, oh, I can't achieve anything. Well, the reason is because they weren't giving all of the energy and all of their focus on every single aspect. And so therefore, they judge the places where maybe they're not succeeding and then say they can't do anything. So it's better to actually focus on specific goals, have less of them that are more meaningful to help us achieve the overall outcome that we want to achieve. Think of somebody who says, I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to go to gym seven days a week and I'm going to do yoga for an extra hour and I'm going to totally change my diet and I'm going to drink six cups of water and, 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 and. They're packing on too many things and then they're going to not do some of these things and they go, oh, well, you know what? I can't lose weight anyway. It's just the way that I am. Another problem, and this kind of ties in with what we were saying before as well, is also not reviewing progress. You see, what's worked in the past 
is not necessarily going to be what's going to work right now or what's going to take us forward. The thinking that got you to where you are is typically not the thinking that's going to get you to go to where you want to be. Because goals and situations change. And so therefore must we as well. New technology, new ideas, new apps even. There's different things that can help us achieve the outcomes that we want to achieve. So how I might have wanted to become a millionaire 15 years ago and how I might do it today can be totally different. A prime example of that might be nowadays you have many younger people that have become millionaires even before they're 18 with using social media and YouTube and things like that. So we want to review our own progress, how are we progressing, what's working, what's not working, as well as what other things can we do and change to be able to get us to that overall outcome. Of course, perfectionism is something that holds a lot of people back. Typically, it might even lead to procrastination or paralysis. You know, you might have heard the term analysis paralysis. At worst, it might be that the person never actually moves forwards to actually go and achieve their goals. I think it's better for us to pursue excellence. And that, on the other hand, well, what that means, it inspires us to want to do better and better. Think of the Wright brothers. They didn't go to create SpaceX. They just wanted to build an airplane. Just be able to fly. And of course, so technologies change, we've progressed, new people have come along and created better technologies, better way of doing things. And of course, now we have a company like SpaceX, but it had to start somewhere. So when people get caught up in the idea of perfectionism, very often they don't start. Better to start with something that is not as good and then work to make it better than never to start at all. Of course, sometimes people just lack motivation. The problem is that willpower, if we only rely on willpower, well, that will only take us so far. We need to be motivated to achieve our goals. We're going to look more at this again as we go through the training. But, you know, 20%, 30%, that typically is not going to be motivating enough. So we want to find out what is it about this goal that really motivates us. And if our goals don't motivate us, well, then probably we're not going to be pushing through on them. What's really interesting is that our goals should be aligned with our values and what's really important to us. When we look at our strategies and how we do things. So an example in NLP, if we look at somebody that is totally motivated, they have a strategy for them to become totally motivated. And what's not immediately obvious is there was a feeling just before they were totally motivated that actually got them motivated to be able to do that thing. And that feeling relates to our values and so therefore our motivation and our values and our goals are actually tightly aligned and if we can get them aligned of course we're going to be really motivated to go and achieve that outcome as I said we'll talk a little bit more about motivation as we go through the training but what's really important to as proper planning goal setting requires proper planning you know, many people attempt to achieve their goals by trial and error. Maybe they arbitrarily focus their energy on what they think might work, hoping that it's going to get them the type of results that they want. Yeah, it might work on the little, the smaller, fluffy goals, but most probably it's not going to work for the larger, more meaningful goals. So we need to fundamentally go and change how we think about our goal setting. We want to have proper planning to be able to carry us through in that achievement. An example is somebody that might want to shed a few pounds. Simple enough, maybe eat a little bit less or they 
exercise a little bit more. But somebody who wants to really live a healthier lifestyle, well, that requires more planning. It requires a deeper, sustainable change rather than just dropping a couple of pounds here and there. And of course, that's why the weight loss industry is a multi-billion dollar industry per year because it works on failure. Lose some weight, put it back on. Lose some weight, put it back on. That's why we have yo-yo diets. So proper planning is essential when it comes to goal setting. Now the next video, we're going to see why it's actually important to have proper goals. And I'll see you then.